Today we're going to be talking about how to modify, enhance, beautify your 3D uh, terrain. So I have a dungeon tile, a cavern tile from Dungeon Works, which makes really cool terrain stuff. You should check them out. That's Dungeon Works. Uh, and this is, I dropped it in. It comes in vertically because on FDM printer, the layer lines will be a lot less noticeable if you print the tile like this vertically. But because it has a lot of texture, if you flip it over and print it flat, it will still look really good. So I'm also going to want to flip that over because I like to, when I'm working on these tiles like this, to have them flat the way they're going to look in real life. It's easier for me. And in the end, I'm going to print it flat once I add stuff to it. So first, I'm going to go to the rotate button, which is the middle button down there. If I click on a blue arrow, it turns green, and then I can rotate in that direction. So if I click the middle one, green, I can then, that's the yaw. And if I click the top one, which is the pitch, you see that? The other thing I can do is I can just go down and click on one of those directly and then type in a value. If I type in a value, like zero, it goes to that value. So if I want to flip this so it's flat, I believe I have to go to minus 90, or I could go to 270, either way should work. And that should put this tile flat for me. Now, you'll notice when I do that, because it's rotating the tile around the center axis, you will see that the tile is now floating in the air, which obviously I do not want. So one of the key buttons you're going to use in 3D Builder is the Settle button, and that's under the Object. So you go up to the top menu there, and you click Object, and then you're going to click Settle. Then it asks you to Confirm. So that's a little check mark up there. You hit Confirm, that check up there. And then it's done. It's on the base plate. So we don't have to worry that it's floating in the air by a millimeter, under the base by a millimeter, which could really mess up your prints. Now, I've dropped in a bunch of different mushrooms from Thingiverse, plus a bear trap, plus a Gloomhaven pillar. If you just search any of those words, you'll find these on Thingiverse for free. So what I want to do is I want a pillar on my cavern tile. If I print it separately, that'll work. I can glue it on or tack it on or do whatever. But my players are clumsy. They'll probably knock it over. I might even knock it over myself. So I'd rather that cavern tile had this, this uh, stalactite or pillar actually as part of the tile itself. So it's my world, damn it, and I'm going to make it happen. And you're looking at this because you're going to make your world, and you want it to look like however you want it to look like. So that's why you're watching the video. So let's move this over. We're going to join these two together. And that's going to be one piece, and it's going to print out. It's going to look amazing, and my players won't be able to break it or move it. So I go to the move, which is the bottom left, and it works the same way as the yaw. You click on any arrow, it turns green. Then you can drag and move the pillar, the object, in that direction. Uh, you can also do it by typing in values. I'll type in a different Z height value, so you can see it'll raise it up. Type in 35, and it'll raise it up 8 millimeters from the 27 that it is. Boom. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to drag that over. So that, first I'm going to settle it, because I always settle everything. Like I said, it's, it's just a habit of mine. Make sure it's flat and it's down. Then I'm going to drag it over. Once I drag it over, I need to select the pillar and the floor tile at the same time. So once I'm going to drag it over, okay. First thing I'm going to drag it over say, wait, this isn't how I want it to look. Plus, you can see it's intersecting the model, the blue highlights. It's going way too deep into the model. If I tried to put a clip there, it wouldn't fit. So I want to raise this pillar up. So it's barely intersecting the model, but enough that there's no daylight showing because I want to look you know, like it's organically there as best I can. So now I see daylight. That's bad, right? It's not even touching. I need to drop this down and make sure that uh, when I join it, it'll be one nice solid piece. So I drop it in just a little bit like that. Let me rotate it. Looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the menu on the right and the uh, bottom right circular button there. That is the sticky button, as I call it. So it's a sticky selection. And once I have my pillar selected, if I now click on the tile, they will both be selected at once. Okay, So I've done that. See, now they're both highlighted. They're both selected. Uh, if I click this mushrooms, it's highlighted. If I click it again, it's not highlighted. So it's not part of the sticky selection anymore. So now that I have the two pieces that I want selected, I'm going up to the top right button, which is Group Object, this very important button for what we're doing. Once I hit this, this is now, 3D Builders made this one model. And you'll see as I click and drag this around, it's just one model. It's one piece. If I print it right now, it's going to print that as one solid piece. It's going to be beautiful. It looks good. My players can't move it or break it. I print in PLA+, Plus, which is incredibly strong. I mean, you'd actually have to grab this and, and forcibly try to snap it in order to break it. So that looks good. And you know, I actually want my pillar bigger. 
I want a little. I want it to look a little more dramatic on the table, and I want the cavern to feel like the height is bigger. So now I'm going to the second button from the top, which is ungroup. Once I click that, it's now two separate models again. And you'll see if I get rid of the sticky selection and then click one, I can now drag it around independently. This is like when your kids leave home for college; they're independent. They've left you. So. Well, we don't really want that actually. So we, we do want to group it first. I want to change the size of this. So I'm going to the third button down at the bottom we haven't talked about yet, which is the scaling button. So on the scaling button, you'll see a little lock there, which looks open at the bottom right now. And when I click that closed, it locks the proportions of the model. So if I change any of these proportions, uh, it changes all of them at once. So the model looks exactly the same, just changes in size. So I click it, it's locked. Once it's locked, I can just change one parameter and it will change all three. You can also change, as I was just mousing over, you saw, you can also change by clicking on any of the arrows that are green and dragging them. We'll do the same thing, but it's very imprecise. Also, if you click millimeters, it then goes to percentages. Now, a little wonky thing about this program is you'll see it's at 4%, basically. Uh, once you start messing with it, sometimes it throws off the percentages, and that's why I don't normally use percentages. The only time I use percentages is if I drop in a model, let's say in three or four pieces, I drop them all in, I group them, I click them, I scale them to say 110, 120%, whatever size I want, even down to 50% if I want to make it smaller, do it all at once, the percentage, so that you know that everything's going to fit perfectly. So let me show you on this tile, see it's at 100%, I'll make it 110, you'll see the whole model grows 10%. Boom. Okay, so that's what I do in my multi-part models. Otherwise, I scale everything by millimeters, especially when I'm doing figures, which I'm going to do another video on. Uh, you always want to use millimeters so you know exactly how high, how tall your figure is and how it's going to relate to your other figures. So now, getting back to our pillar, go to millimeters. Uh, let's make this bigger. I want to look more dramatic. So there, boom. I made it bigger. You see that everything changed. It's the exact same model, just bigger. Now, if I wanted to, I could just change one parameter by hitting the unlock button. And now I'll just make it taller only, not wider, just taller. So you'll see it stretches out a little bit, okay? It changes the look of the model a little bit. Sometimes you want that, though. Like, there are times when I get miniatures that are so thin, I actually don't change the height, but I make them thicker and wider so that they'll print better and they look a little better. So now let's drag this over, okay, back to our corner. Doesn't look like it's intersecting too much, but let's double check. Let's, it's always good to pick it up. So you see the daylight, and then just drop it down, so you know it's just intersecting the model. It's totally going to be solid, but it's not going down too far. Okay, so I drag it down, and then that looks great. So then what I need to do is go back to my sticky selection. I need to select the cavern tile again, and now I need to group them again. Now it's again, it's one model. Uh, let's check it out. We move it around. Uh, we can rotate it. One of the good things about 3D Builder, unlike Chitterbox, the back button works well here. So if I hit back, it literally undoes the last thing you did, just like Photoshop. Unlike Chitterbox, which is selective and won't undo certain things, this undoes whatever you did last. So let's say this looks good, but I want a mushroom. You know what I mean? I want this mushroom, which is way too huge, of course. So let's scale it down. But I want a mushroom on there, too. So let's try 10 millimeters. That might be realistic size, but I think it's too small. Let's make it 12 because we're dealing in miniatures. We need to be able to see the damn thing. So let's move it over. Let's put it right next to the pillar. So I'm going to drag it up so I can see it. I'm going to drag it back there. Now I'm going to drop it down. I want to make sure the stalk goes into the model enough again, not too deep, but enough that it's printing as one solid piece. My players, they can bang into this. They're not even going to break this little mushroom off. It's going to be very sturdy, actually. Okay. So now it's in there. It looks great. Um, I like it, looking good. But you know what? Let let's go nuts. Let's let's take one of the tree mushrooms, that little tree mushroom. I actually think that would be kind of cool, like growing off the side of the pillar. I I, I think that would be a possibility. And we're talking fantasy anyway, so who cares? What we want is a model that looks great. By placing a mushroom like this, it allows you to add some color. Like let's say you're painting that all shades of gray or whatever. You want to add this mushroom, and you can paint it red. You can paint it orange. It'll really liven up. Uh, your dungeon, and you can paint the underside a different color, too. So let's drag it over. Let's move it up a little bit so you can see it a little better. And you know what? I think we should make this a little... Let's dr we have to drag it into the model so it's intersecting totally, but that's too far. Get it out so it looks nice. Let's make it a little bigger so that we can see it easier. You know, because again, we're talking... This thing is going to be super tiny. Let's, let's blow it up a little bit. Okay. So what we're going to do is just go there. We're going to scale the whole thing up. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to do something else important here. We're going to duplicate this. Okay, so we go to Object, Duplicate. Makes an exact copy, but we don't want an exact copy because players will notice it looks the same, it looks fake. So let's change this up. One way is to rotate it a little bit. That makes it look totally different, actually, at this size, just rotating it. And also, let's scale it a little smaller. And now people are going to think it's two totally different mushrooms, even though it's the same mushroom. So I scale it down. I think, in real life, I'm not sure these grow under or over these type of mushrooms, but let's put the small one on top, just so we can see it better. Again, we're doing this to add color and, and, and make it an interesting look. So let's make sure this intersects properly with the model, which it does. Then we're going to sticky select. We have that little mushroom selected. We're going to select the uh, cavern tile. Well, first I'm going to drag these other things over. You can see you could just scale these and use these if you want. You could add them all in at once. You can basically do just whatever whatever you want in your little world. It's like a, like a Bob Ross painting. So I select my little mushroom. Now I'm going to select my cavern tile, sticky. Right Now I merge them. You'll notice I didn't select the big mushroom because I want to show you something. So now you see the big mushroom is still highlighted blue because it's its own model. So now let's select it and select the cavern tile. Now when we group it, now you're going to see it all turn gray. That means it's all one model. You're looking at it, you can see it's all one model. Now I can drag it around, move it. Uh, it looks amazing right now already. And it's all one model. Prints out. It is going to be totally beautiful. So you're creating the tile you want. Create the dungeon your players want. Uh, you can add so many things like this. You know, I'm, I'm giving you a small sample. Obviously, use your imagination. You can attach anything to this tile. For some reason, if you want a treasure chest attached to a tile, you just drop a treasure chest in and attach it. Works great. So what I'm going to show you in the next video in terms of modifying things, you know, I'm just showing you how you can click separate things, stick in, just move them. Uh, if you do something you don't like it, you can always click that the back button, and uh, it'll move stuff right back to... Uh, to where it was in case you messed something up. I mess stuff up all the time moving it. I have sticky selection. I don't realize. I click it. You know, just click back. So what I'm going to show you in the next video coming up is I'm going to show you how to take a model, a beautiful model by a great artist, and you can actually make it better. Or not only just make it better, make it better for you. You can customize it by doing very little things. You, you don't need artistic talent because I have none. You don't need any sculpting skill because I have none. But I'll show you to take this figure on the left and say add bullets to the belt like I did on the right. And uh, you can really customize figures. And I also hollowed out the gun barrels, as you can see. So I'm going to do a video and teach you how to do all of that. So you can start customizing your models to make sure they look exactly how you want them to look like on bases that you want them to look like. So I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe. Please hit like and look for my other videos. Thank you.